All right. Do you want to start off with introductions? <laughs> um, all right. So I'm Catherine and Nicole, and we are second year graduate students at uh, UNC here in Chapel Hill, and we're really excited um, to be able to Skype with or video chat with y'all today. Um, and so just to kind of give you guys an idea of what graduate school is, um, so right now you guys are in middle school, and then you'll go on to high school, um, then you'll have the option to go to college. Graduate school is what happens after college if you choose to go for it. And basically, after college you choose a specialized um, field that you want to study further. And Nicole and I have chosen chemistry, so we're at the chemistry graduate program at UNC. Um, and so, uh, to go over like a review of the session we're going to do today, um, first we're going to go through um, more background about like ourselves and how we got involved with graduate school and why we chose to do science. Um, then we're going to go through some background material on the microscope we're going to be using today. Um, and then we will be doing um, some kind of live demos of how we loaded your samples and we'll show you all the instrument. And then finally we're going to um, look at your samples with the microscope. So there's a lot that we have planned for y'all and we're really excited. Um, so to first start, um, we just wanted to share with you guys why we chose graduate school and why we chose to do science. And so for me, I was actually um, in high school when I had a really great chemistry teacher. And um, I wasn't too sure if I really enjoyed chemistry that much, um, but I soon started to realize that I really did love it. And my teacher, she believed in me a lot. Um, she told me that I was um, good at what I was doing and that if I loved it, I should pursue it more. And so after high school, I went to college and kind of thought about being a doctor for a little bit, but then I realized that I don't like dealing with blood. <laughs> um, so I decided to go on with chemistry and it's been an adventure ever since. Yeah, um, so I actually decided that I wanted to be a scientist when I was in seventh and eighth grade, so the same um, place you're in now. And I, um, I didn't initially want to be a scientist because I was good at science, but I just knew that I really loved science and it was really interesting to me and I always wanted to know more about it. So. Um, that's kind of how I got into it. And then um, when I went to high school, I took a lot of science classes. And um, that's where I figured out that I really loved chemistry. And so when I went to college, I went to college for chemistry. Um, and so that's where I am now. And I'm, I'm a scientist. And I'm, um, it's awesome. And I love it. So um, I think what we're going to tell you a little bit about now is the kind of research that we do now that we're in graduate school. And so, Catherine, you want to start? Sure. Um, so once you're in graduate school and you're in your field of chemistry, you pick a very special topic um, that's very unique, and you research it um, very thoroughly for many years. And um, the topic that I chose was all about energy. And so some of you may know that much of our energy um, is from fossil fuels, but those do kind of gross things to our environment. And so my research is focused on trying to find a energy resource that is safer and renewable. That means we can use it over and over and over again without it worrying of it running out. And so I work with things like solar cells, which you guys may have seen or heard of, um, and really just trying to find a good energy source um, for our future energy needs. So my interests lie mostly in um, things that are more medically related. And so my research is focused on developing um, new tools that can be used right in the doctor's office that can diagnose diseases like cancer faster. And so the benefit of my tools is that they're cheaper and that we're going to get a faster diagnosis of disease. So that's what I work on. Um, so now uh, we have some PowerPoint slides that we've prepared. Um, I'm not sure. We're going to try to share the screen and see how that goes. Um, so, oh, let me try doing this. We'll see if this works. Okay, so y'all should be able to see a PowerPoint right now. Okay, great. 
Okay. Um, and so right now, the big picture should be of the light microscope. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll talk a little bit about the instrument that we're using. I think there's Uh-oh. Oh. Can y'all still hear us and see the screen? Yeah, we can. Okay. Oh, okay. So, right, what we have here is a light microscope, and you guys have used this um, in class. It should have looked something similar. Um, so you have your stage where you put your sample, and then light shines up through your sample, and you're able to see the image with your eye, right? And then you have knobs on the side that you can use to focus your image. Um, but we're using a, a slightly um, different microscope today, and it's a lot more high power and better, and Catherine's going to tell you about that and how it's different. Right, so on the left now, y'all should see our light microscope, um, and we've kind of inverted that image from the previous slide to show you how we're looking at it now. So at the bottom, you have your eye and then the light, like Nicole talked about. A scanning electron microscope is what we're using today, um, and so in an electron microscope, basically instead of the light, we're using a beam of electrons, and electrons are just um, another way uh, to visualize uh, your specimen. And so like with a light microscope, you have a place to put your specimen, and you have um, different lenses that you can use to focus your image. The main difference here, though, um, besides the beam being electrons, is that your detector in the light microscope was your eye. Here we actually have a specialized um, detector. Um, which uh, detects the electrons and then shows uh, the images to us. And so the real benefit about using microscopes is being able to see really, really small things. And so with our eye, we can see each other, we can see um, our hands, we can see our fingers, we can even see our hair, but our hair, um, that's about our limit. So the width of the human hair is 100 microns. And a light microscope can see that, and a mi light microscope can see a red blood cell, um, which is about 10 microns, and it, it can even see bacteria, but um, it kind of reaches its limit there at bacteria. An electron microscope, though, can see things like viruses all the way down to an atom. So it can see DNA, it can see glucose molecules, and it can see atoms. So really, really tiny things, and these things are on the nanometer scale. So we have micrometer, which is um, 100 micrometers is the width of your hair. And then we have uh, nanometers, which are way smaller than microns. And um, so when we are showing y'all images, we'll point out the scale bar and try to tell y'all exactly how small of a feature this is in relation to the um, size dimension. Um, so now uh, we, we've given y'all some background just on these different microscopes. Um, we have some videos prepared, but I'm not sure with the connection how well it's going to go. Um, but before we get to that, we want to pause to see if y'all have any questions. Um, so just raise your hand and Mr. Gatt will call on you, and then you can come ask us any questions you have. Any questions about, about the microscope? No. No, not yet. Okay. okay. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Um, so instead of getting the videos, we're just going to do a live demo here. Um, and so Nicole's going to move our webcam view over to what I'm going to be doing. And okay. You guys may want to try to maximize the view of uh, the webcam that we've got, just so it'll be a little easier to see while we're getting set up. Okay, it is back to much now. All right, cool. Cool. So, first thing I'm doing is I'm putting on gloves. Um, anytime we've handled the all samples, it's, we've always put on gloves because we don't want any residues from our fingers to get on your samples. And we've already loaded um, your samples into the instrument. Um, and we I'll go through what samples we've loaded, but just to show you all how this works, I'm going to show you guys right now. Um, are they still there? Are y'all still there? Yeah, we're here. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> we, lost your, we lost your screen. Okay. Um, okay, so 
First, I have your fabric sample, which is a very pretty piece of fabric. Um, and so I'm going to set that down right there. And I have a couple tools here. So I have some forceps. Um, this is kind of a special forcep that we can use to pick up this little stage here. And this stage, this mini stage, is what we're actually going to put your sample on. So it's very tiny. So I'm actually going to cut a piece of that fabric. And then this stage, this mini stage, goes into this bigger stage, just in one of those holes. And then this is actually what we mount into the instrument to look at your samples. So we can look at four different samples at a time, you can see here. Um, then what I also have here, we use something called copper tape to adhere all of your samples. Um, that just helps them stick onto the stage so they don't go flying around while we're trying to look at them. Um, so I'm just going to cut a piece of that off, and then we use a razor blade to help us get uh, the backing off of this tape. So now you can see I have one sticky side, and then the other side is also sticky, but I haven't removed that backing yet. And so then I'm going to put the sticky side down on this stage, like so, and then using the razor blade, I'm going to take that other piece of backing off. There we go. So now I have a nice sticky side of that stage to put my sample on. So I'm going to cut a little piece of this fabric to fit that stage. Okay. And I'm going to use tweezers to handle this sample from now on or forceps, they're also called. I'm going to stick that on there, make sure it stays stuck, and then I'm going to place it onto, oops, I'm going to place it onto the uh, stage here. Okay, and so that's how we uh, prepared all of y'all samples for the analysis. Um, are there any questions at this point? Mm, I don't see any. Okay. <laughs> How, those pieces, the, the quality isn't very good. The quality of the video? Oh, the video, yeah. So it's hard to see exactly, like, when you're showing the razor blade. I couldn't really tell it was a razor blade. Oh. Oh, okay. But that's not your fault. It's okay. Okay. Um, the, uh, the pieces were about a centimeter square, they look like, maybe? Yeah, they're they're pretty small, maybe a, maybe two centimeters or so. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have one question, Amelia. So, it isn't the stage normally a square? Um, I have not worked with a square stage before, um, but I know you guys on the light microscope they are square shaped, and so um, yeah, really the shape. Thinking of, the, of, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So in our microscope, we work with circle stages, but that's a very good difference that you saw there in the difference of stages. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to get y'all samples. We have the cricket body and uh, head. We actually re removed the head, and we have some cool um, things to look at there. Um, we have the lichen. We have the guinea pig food and poop side by side. <laughs> and we have um, the cat hair side by side with Mr. Gat hair in there too. Um, and so we kind of have all those samples to look at and we wanted to see what you guys wanted to look at first. Who? Cricket. Cricket. Who? Uh, who votes for cricket? Okay. <laughs> who votes for poop? <laughs> well, unfortunately they voted for poop, but I... Okay, okay so who's first? Yeah. Okay. okay. Great after all. <laughs> no, we're first screen. So if y'all um, see on the big screen, it should be our view of the camera in there. Yes. And uh, what Nicole is doing is she's moving the stage over to the poop and the food samples. And so here coming into view is the guinea pig poop. And uh, you can tell right off the bat, it looks very, very dense and very fibrous. And I mean, that kind of makes sense though, right? Because poop is very compact, just debris. So we, um, 
it, it should look pretty dense and fibrous. Mm -hmm. And so now, uh, if you look at the lower left hand of your screen, you can see the magnification. And then you can also see um, the length scale, too, down there in the well, corner. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we can't read any of that. OK. Um, it's, it's just the, the quality is very blocky right now. OK. Well, I will just um, kind of talk through what we're looking at then in terms of length scale. Um, so right now, uh, this is kind of a blown up version of the poop. Um, it's about one, maybe two or three millimeters in diameter right now. Uh, so uh, much, much bigger than you'd normally see poop. <laughs> um, we're going to zoom in on it. And we found some pretty interesting things in here that we want to talk through with y'all. Okay. Um, so we're going to have to zoom in pretty far so y'all can see it with the video. Um, and so do you start to see kind of in the middle of the screen us coming in on this round um, feature? Yeah. Round yeah. feature with a tail? Okay. So this, um, we believe, is actually a seed. And so... Um, I'm sure y'all might know that animals eat, especially guinea pigs, eat uh, seeds and other plants that um, germinate through seeds. And so how those seeds get spread is that an animal will eat them and they can't digest them fully. And then they get pooped out, basically. And they use um, the poop environment as like fertilizer. And so when an animal moves around and poops someplace new, these seeds get traveled. To, or travel to new places where they'll grow. Um, and so you see a ton of these all through your sample. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is, I thought this was really cool because these are like, this is exactly how seeds spread and how they um, grow in new places. Um, so let's see. We're gonna take a picture for y'all of one of the zoomed in seeds. Um, but are y'all able to see kind of how they're all spread over the, the poop. Yeah, this yeah. is. Look at that. Yeah, That's this cool. one's really nice. It's a really cool one. Is that like a sprout coming out of it? Yeah, it's it's already started to to germinate in the poop. Um. Looks like you see them defeated. So. Nick, a question. So what you're saying is. Seeds are cultivating and technically growing in food. Yes, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, and since the sample is probably like a week or two old, it makes sense that they've grown a little bit too. Um, it's not like the seeds grow inside the guinea pig. That's that's not true. Yeah. But once they poop it out, they can start growing. So now I think uh, we can look at the guinea pig. Or what? It, what do y'all want to look at next? Cricket head. Cricket head. Mr. Cat's hair. Okay. okay. So I think we'll look at the cricket head first, and then Mr. Gat's hair. That's two I heard the loudest. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're going to move over to where we have the cricket head. And this is this is a really cool sample. Um, uh -huh. We're excited for y'all to see this. So Nicole is just, again, moving the stage over to the cricket head. And once she gets there, oh, we'll here we go. We're getting there. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, you're so good. Yeah. yeah, so right now, um, yeah, so I did decapitate the cricket. Um, I said very nice wishes for him after I did it. Um, and so we're going to take a picture first of this view. But so I, I, I chopped off the head and I put it face up. So we're looking right down onto the cricket's head, um, kind of like a bird's eye view. And so. And um, he's smiling. Yeah, he can, you, can, <laughs> you can see him smiling at y'all. Um, and so kind of these big um, features here, that's where his antenna were. Um, they broke off, unfortunately, um, in the bag, but uh, that's where the antenna would come out. And then probably the, uh, one of the 
most well-known features is the, are the eyes. And so Nicole is pointing to where the eye is right now. There's one um, eye here, then one eye over here. Yeah, and those are pretty cool. Uh, I think we're going to zoom in on those first. Yeah. Um, so crickets have um, usually three eyes, and unfortunately we couldn't find the third one, um, but what we're zooming in on now is uh, called the um, kind of like their main eye. Um, and what you'll see is very like hexagonal shapes here on the eye. Um, are you all able to see that okay? Yes. Okay. And so what these are are actually hexagonal um, lenses. Um, and so these lenses actually allow a cricket to see all around them. Um, these are the things that allow crickets to not really have to move their head around to see. They can just kind of see all around them at one time. And so we're taking a picture of that for you guys. Um, but you can see that this structure is very symmetric. Um, there's a couple of debris, just like kind of like dirt on him, but the structure of the lens is, is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, are there questions on that part or any part so far? Well, I should have mentioned this uh, was a sour cream and onion flavored cricket that I got. Oh, really? <laughs> Uh, okay. That's very interesting. It's been sitting in a box on my desk for about two years now. Oh, okay. That that answers a lot. That's so <laughs> kind of a bits of actual like powdered flavoring on it or something. Oh, okay. We have a yeah. question here, Gabe. How far could you zoom in? Could you zoom in more than that? Oh, yeah, so yeah. right now, um, I'm sorry, we're at about 300 microns. And so um, remember I said that the width of your hair is about 100. And so we're about three times the width of your hair is the feature we're looking at right now. And so um, we're going to get this in focus, and then we'll zoom in even more. Should I zoom in on the eye again? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. We're going to zoom in on the eye again to kind of show you all how far we can zoom in. Um, so right now we're about at a width of a human hair, I'll have to refocus. and we're going to refocus this image. Okay, so one of these little hexagonal lenses are about 25 microns in length. So it's about a quarter of the width of your hair. So if you look at your hair right now and imagine a quarter of that width, that's how big the, the hexagonal lens is. So that's really small. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I can get any. And so we are um, zoomed in about 4,000 times on it. Um, and you can see we're having trouble focusing, and that's just because we've kind of reached the, the magnification limit for this feature. OK. Um, but yeah, this is a very small feature. Um, so now, let's see, do you all want to look more at the head, or we also have his legs um, and the, his body that we can look at? So there's also an arm on this one. Oh, cool. you want to look at the arm really quick. Okay. So I think we're actually going to move and look at his arm. Um, so the way I cut his head, he had just one arm kind of dangling free. Um, <laughs> So he's like reaching out for help right now. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah. <laughs> so right now, it's, you can kind of see the claw at the end there. Um, you have kind of two sharp uh, features poking out. And we're just refocusing. Yeah, that's why you see it gets blurry and then. Yeah, we have to focus just like you would in a light microscope. There we go. Okay. You do it manually? Yeah, we do it manually. Yeah. Um, this is his claw. Yeah, this is really cool. Yeah. Um, so do y'all see all these like spikes coming out off the leg or the claw? Uh, sort of. Sort of. Um. It's still pretty blocky. Let's, we'll zoom in some more. No, it just popped up. No, it looks good. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, okay, now I see the spikes. Okay. So this whole um, kind of claw that we're looking at here is 100 microns in length. So this is about a human hair size. But these little spikes that you see coming off all over, um, they're actually bristles. And this is what, these are like sensors. It kind of helps the cricket to feel around and kind of know um, his surroundings better. And so these are like all over the cricket's arms and legs. And we're taking a picture of kind of a zoomed out version first. Okay. Okay. Um, so I could zoom in on one of these. Those spikes? Yeah, one of the spikes. Oh, it's oh yeah. So we're going to zoom in on one of them. <laughs> and when we zoom in, you can start to see more fine structure of the claw. Um, so we're looking at a, a spike right now. And this spike is about 50 microns in length. Um, so about half of the human hair. Um, and we're, oh, go ahead, please. I'm sorry? You said the length of the spike was 50 microns? Yes. Oh. And so we're actually moving to a new area um, to get a little better of an edge. Um, so this, yeah, this is nice. Um, so these are spikes. These are smaller ones. They're about 20 microns. Um, so about a fourth of the size of a human hair. Um, so not not very well visible with the eye. You can still kind of see them with the eye, but not super well. And are y'all able to see the, the finer structure on the, on the spike, or is it too blocky? Well, I'm not sure if it's... Okay, now I see, like, stripes on it? Yeah. 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 And so um, these spikes have this kind of stripe feature, and these stripes features are like a micron maybe in width, um, so definitely not visible with the human eye because that's one one hundredth of your hair uh, width. So very, very fine features. And we're zooming in more just to kind of show how much we can see with this instrument. So our magnification right now is about 20,000 uh, times. And can you take a picture of that, please? Yes, we can do that. We're focusing it a bit. It's kind of my limit. Yeah. yeah. Once, to a certain amount, when you zoom in, we, we reach a limit in focus. <laughs> so, but we're taking an, an image of that right now. And so uh, the length bar at the bottom of the screen is five microns right now. Okay. So we'll see less blocky bear versions of all these pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you will. <laughs> we'll yeah, send them to you. Much, much better images. Um, so, are there any questions before we go to another sample? No. No, we better move on to the next one, I guess. All okay. right. So we're going to move on to the, the hair. Um, so we're going to move to Mr. Gas hair next to the cat hair. <laughs> So this cat has very fine hair. Yeah, we noticed. Yes. <laughs> okay, so right now coming into view should be a uh, hair. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so the top hairs, the much thinner hairs, are the cats. And then um, at the bottom there are Mr. Gat's hair. And so we're going to kind of zoom in on the features of this hair. Um, and we actually have a cat hair overlaying with Mr. God's hair. Right there. Right there. Yeah. And uh, we're going to zoom in on that to kind of show y'all the differences. So in general, um, cat hair is much thinner than human hair. 
So again, the human hair you're looking at is about 100 microns in width. The cat hair is probably 25 microns in width. Are you all able to hear us still? Yeah, we still hear you. And so we're taking an image right now. I got one. Yeah. Uh, and it's your gap here and the cap here. Kind of right there. We'll zoom in now. We're in the studio. Yeah, so we're zooming in, and um, once we focus it, you all should be able Ooh, I got to see it. kind of the structure on the hair of the cuticle. Yes. So this is the cat hair, kind of in front, mm -hmm. and then behind it is Mr. Gas hair. But it's and not so free. You see that the cuticle kind of looks uh, pretty similar to each other. In reality, a cat hair is supposed to be much um, more rigid than a human hair. But right now they look pretty similar. So. Eight to ten, maybe. From the soft underbelly of my cat. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> we were gonna say so your, your, your hair looks very, very much like a cat, cat so we <laughs> weren't sure. We just lost your video. Uh oh. Okay. <coughs> it said no one is sending video. Oh. It said no one is sending video. Okay. Let me let me disconnect and reconnect. Hankering for pizza. Is it back? Uh, not yet. I think it's... Let's see. Is it, so you can't see the microscope or the two of us? No, I don't. Okay. Let me try again. Okay, do you see the video yet? No, not yet. Patience, please. Um, let me leave and come back to the meeting and see if that if that fixes it. You want me to leave or you're gonna leave? Or both of us. Um, actually, can you try leaving first and see if that does it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's true. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Uh, yeah, I can hear you and I can see you and your screen as well. Great. Okay. So what hair is this? Okay, so, yeah, here we go. Let me zoom out. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, we're looking at the cat hair in front and Mr. Gat's hair in back. So, you can see from this image alone just how much bigger human hair is than cat hair. Um, so, the cat hair is about a quarter size of the human's hair. And then, looking more at the structure um, of the cuticle structure. So, these features... Um, are very fine, and so we definitely don't this on our hair when we look at it, right? Like it looks pretty smooth. Um, but here you can see there's actually a very fine structure on our hair. So, can you tell which way the animal would have been in this view? Like which way it would have been connected to the cat? Oh, uh, that's a good point. Oh yeah. Um. I assume it would be down and to the left. Yeah, I had to look at the end of the hair. Yeah, we can go look at the end of the hair. Yeah, but you're right. It would it would be further down. So we're zooming out to find the end of the hair right now. Okay. Well, I would have cut it. Oh, there's one. It didn't, it didn't come, like, straight out of the cat's. I didn't yank it out of the cat's belly. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you cut it off. Yeah, yeah. that's a good question, though. I... Okay, so this looks like an end where you maybe cut the hair. 
maybe? Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. Yeah, if they want to look at the other end. Well, that tells me that that's the other end would have tapered yeah, off. You Unless you had to cut it, probably put it up there, right? Uh, yeah, we cut it a little bit too, actually. Oh, that's To put it on the sample. Or on the stage. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
Good, I'm glad. Um, so we're just going to take a few more images for y'all here, but um, we don't want to make to keep y'all past your class period. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, we both really enjoyed looking at y'all's samples. Um, they were definitely very, very cool and very um, interesting to look at. And we learned a lot, too. So, like, we're not experts at this, but we definitely learned a ton. Um, yeah. Thank you for doing this for us. We appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. We were happy to do it. It was great. All right. Well, I'm going to let them go. Okay. Sounds good.